All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy end of TDX. We've almost made it. Hopefully you have a few brain cells left to talk about the architect's overview of Salesforce diagrams. So let's jump in. You've seen this one before. You know what I'm going to say. Please make all purchasing decisions based on currently available product. We are going to look ahead today. Uh, you've also seen this slide before. We'd love your feedback. Please uh, scan the QR code and leave feedback about this session. Tell them you want a lot more sessions for architects, especially about diagrams. All right, I am Justin Pajowski. I'm a lead evangelist on the Salesforce Architects team, and I'm here with... My name is Shobi Abdi. I'm a principal evangelist, Salesforce Architects. I will be playing demo nerd. All right. So, thank you. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out until 3 o'clock. And thank you for being interested in Salesforce diagrams. We have some really cool things to show you this afternoon. So, quick agenda for the next 15 to 20 minutes. First and foremost, why diagrams? Why do these matter? I think I can convince you that diagrams are one of the most important tools in the Architects Toolkit. We are gonna see these diagrams in action, um, and we are going to talk about the roadmap. Um, so we want to make some changes to diagrams in how we present them to you on architect.salesforce.com. And me. we'd love your feedback along the way. One moment. There we go. Tell us a little bit about the well-architected framework. <laughs> uh, okay, so I want to ground us here. Um, hopefully, if you all are architects, you have heard about the well-architected framework which is put out by our team, the Salesforce Architects. This is built by uh, architects, engineers, third-party consultants, people from all over the Salesforce ecosystem. We bring all of their information in and we build standards for designing and implementing healthy Salesforce solutions. We think it's really important to follow this guidance to build Salesforce in a very healthy way. When we break down a well-architected Salesforce solution, there are three pillars that we like to see. First and foremost is trust. You've probably heard that around Salesforce. Your solution has to be trusted and it has to protect the business and the stakeholders. Next, it has to be easy. And when, I, and when we say easy, we mean easy for your users to use. And finally, the solution that you build has to be adaptable to business and the change of business and the change of technology. When you build these solutions in this way, we believe you are going to be successful. So with this in mind, we're gonna talk about diagrams. As I said, diagrams are one of the major vessels to bring well-architected solutions to your stakeholders. They can align your stakeholders to your vision. They're a fantastic tool for that. Also, very importantly, is you have developers, you have consultants, you have people working in the tool you have to give them the details. Diagrams are an awesome way to do that. And if you don't believe me, you probably do because you're all architects, but uh, I wanted to show this slide. I love this slide. So on the left side, we see a solution write up with text on a messaging and event solution that's going to the CTO. On the right hand side, exact same solution. Which one is easier to read? Which one do you think is gonna get buy-in from the CTO? Exactly, exactly. So this slide alone should show you the power of diagrams. Um, at architect.salesforce.com, we have several tools for you around diagramming uh, that can help you do this. So first, we have Salesforce, the most common Salesforce data model. So these will help you. They can be references for you. They can give you um, good ideas and help you understand the backbone of the product. We have diagram examples and templates that you can download and build in to your delivery process. You can build them into your solutions. You can use them with all your stakeholders. And finally, we have a lot of best practices and guidance around how to use and how to build different diagrams, uh, particularly around audience, because audience matters. You want different diagrams for different levels in your organization. So with that backdrop around Well Architected, I'm gonna turn it over to Shobi, who is going to take us under the hood and show us some cool things about diagrams as well as the future of diagrams. All right, before I show anybody anything because I like to like, you know, make people wait for things, who's ever made a Salesforce diagram before using the diagramming framework? 
All right, I got a couple of hands. Who's actually engaged in Well Architect and utilized the Well Architect framework at all? All right. Who's actually gone to one of the workshops that's right there that I'm pointing at, looking at? All right. right. And here's the thing. I urge you, if you haven't, go, because literally the workshop right now is about diagrams. So, but don't leave. <laughs> We're going to show some cool stuff. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of a demo on diagramming. I'm going to, people are like, oh, you're just showing a website. Salesforce is a website, right? And those we call demos. So, you know, give me a break. Right. So one of the things I wanted to show is how accessible our diagramming templates can be. Right. Pretty much you can, you know, we have a plethora of them. Now, instead of essentially making anybody scroll through the whole thing, I'm just going to type in customer model and go to a customer model overview. Has anybody ever used a customer model at all? Has anybody ever engaged in it? Everybody know what it is? Right. Now, customer model is often the foundational element of identity inside of Salesforce. It's the way, end all and be all of like, is this a business account? Is this a person account? Is this like an individual? Is a human being? I'm even seeing some B2C folks in the room that I know that probably should be using this. If you're not using this, I'm gonna really ostracize you. I'm looking at you, you know? But really, this is what's key. So when we look at the, like, everybody see how quick it was for me to go from me ranting like a lunatic to a data model about the customer model? That's how accessible we try to make our diagramming capabilities. And the thing about all of our diagramming capabilities is that if I can zoom, is that they're very robust. So when you look at the diagramming framework in general, this is like a base level data model on just how identity works. On the left-hand side, you'll see a bunch of other capabilities, right? You'll see so the cards, the entities, and also one of the key element differentiators is that these are a lot of product logos, right? So not just like our own product logos, but additional icons indicating other functionality within Salesforce. So one of the things I'll show you really quickly is that how quickly and easily it can be to actually adjust an updated model. Let's just say they're like, yeah, this is great, contact a user, but I actually want one more object off of the user. So what I can really quickly do is drag that guy down, be like, you know what, I'm gonna add another object. And I'm gonna call it, what's a good object? I'm gonna call it friends. Because you guys are my friends, right? Maybe, we'll see how it works, you know? So now if I had to ask, where do you think in the friends object that I would maybe dictate fields? The attributes. I know I can't hear any of you, but I'm going to assume you said attributes, right? There we can dictate fields. And as simple as this, we can, whoop, see, that's, that's why we do live demos, because it always goes bad for me, right? As simple as this, we could basically, see, now that's how simple it is, because it's not simple at all. There, I'm, I usually went this way. We could show the relationship, right? And we can indicate, okay, is this a parent-child? What kind of relationship this is? I'm going to delete that one, because that one's just getting in my way. So is that one. Right. But here's the thing. We say, OK, this is the parent. This is the child. But how do we know it's a parent and a child? You can find some very simple elements of, di you know, of dot model notation. Has anybody used dot model notation when they should use it by diagram? OK, awesome. Right. And this is how we look at the world when it comes to entity relationships. Right. So that is my pseudo quick demo of how to build a, di you know, a data model diagram. Everybody's sufficiently impressed. I can see that's great. You know, so. So really, when we look at diagrams and the power and the ability that diagrams provide, it's about guidance and best practices, right? A diagram shouldn't simply be a diagram for the sake of having a diagram. It should tell a narrative. It should tell a narrative in a visual manner. And the end goal of it is, is it telling the right story for the right audience? And that's what's key, is that who's ever here built a diagram that went completely over the heads of the end stakeholder that you were trying to actually convey it to, right? Maybe because you thought, I'm the technologist, I'm a genius, they're going to love me. But then the business user was like, eh, I'm not a fan. And then you're like, you know what, I've got a great diagram here for the business stakeholder. And the technical stakeholder was like, hey, this is great. I don't know what you're really selling me or telling me about. So you're going to have to put a little bit more detail and work in. Right? So really with the diagram, should, it should really address the right audience. Now, the usual common diagrams that we utilize from a best practice perspective Go across this, you know, we, can, we call it marketing uh, strategy and sales diagrams. Think of it as the more business level diagrams. These are your business stakeholders. These are the individuals that really need to understand the capabilities and functionality of whatever it is that you're implementing. And then the ones on the right are documentation and implementation diagrams, or for sure, DNI diagrams. And the DNI diagrams are really focused on those technical stakeholders. Now, who here thinks that they're mostly going to use the DNI diagrams versus the marketing sales and strategy diagrams? Okay, good. There's a couple of hands, but I'll be honest, you're probably wrong. You probably use both equally, and I'll show you why, right? Mostly because we're going to do another demo. How fun is that? 
right? And this time it's gonna be a little bit of like, I'm gonna set myself up early on because it takes forever for some of these diagrams to load. So when you look at the marketing sales and strategy diagram, one of the funds we're gonna focus on is essentially the big picture. Now, I'm gonna click into Lucidchart. Who here has used Lucidchart? Now, one of the, okay, great, right? One of the things I gotta call out up front is Lucidchart is a paid add-on, it costs money, I'm not gonna do that, but in the end, it's still a great tool. And we support other tools, support Google Slides, PowerPoint, Miro, and elements.cloud, right? And they're all available there right now. So when you look at this business capability map, one of the first things that people usually focus on is like, all right, what's the first thing that I should usually start with when it comes to that business capability map? Now remember, this is for the business users. First thing we usually start with is the business drivers. These are those high level, okay, what is the purpose of what we're doing today? Why are we even meeting to talk about implementing any kind of solution? Because those business drivers will start to cascade down towards everything else that you'll see across all of our other levels of diagrams and all of our other DNI diagrams are, as well, our more technical diagrams. The reason I'm really going on with this is that when we look at this from like an engagement perspective, you know, we really want everyone to understand that like this is not a okay, this I just need to build this to get to the technical aspect. This is the level of this is the kind of level that you need to start getting buy-in, start getting alignment from your business stakeholders, right? Get alignment from the business stakeholders, understand the business drivers, understand the features aligned to the products they are investing in. And then once you've done that, great, fantastic. Then you can look at the DNI diagrams and you can start to convey to those technical stakeholders exactly what it is that they're gonna get from a technology and like, you know, investment perspective. So now obviously this looks a little different, right? Both are level one, both are very high level, but now this is a little bit more of a lay of the land, right? Now who thinks which one comes first? Was it that business diagram or is it the technical diagram? Eh, it could vary, right? You could be maybe you want to understand the technical landscape first before you try to convey a business knowledge. It's totally acceptable, right? You don't always have to go business first, you know, especially because we're at, at a dev conference. At Dreamforce, I'll see something totally different, you know, but that's, that's just what I do, right? But when we look at the system landscape now, it's not simply the technology we have here, but you look at these amazing icons here. Now these icons are actually curated by some great folks on the team, and we work with our product team and our and our uh, you know, content experience team, and each of these icons means something. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and guess that everybody knows what that little guy means right there. If you don't know what it means by now, then I think you've been at the wrong event, <laughs> right? But in the end, that's what this is meant to convey. This is really meant to convey, okay, we've now discussed that business level come, now we're gonna talk about more of that technology investment. All right, I think that's enough demoing. I'm gonna get back to everybody's favorite slides, but actually cool slides, you know? So we're gonna talk about roadmap and priorities and how you can help. This is the key part of it, right? Now, here's what's funny. If people had to guess what are the top 10 uh, models used, guess what? Everybody here loves data models. Who here loves a data model? Yeah, exactly my point. We talk about AI, we talk about data, we talk about AI, data and experience in terms of we need the data first. Right, and obviously everybody in the ecosystem, it reflects that. We gotta know what data we're using before we could do anything around artificial intelligence or large scale of data, you know? So when we look at the data model priorities, right, it's like nine, greater than 90% that are utilized from a diagram perspective data models. Priorities is that we're gonna focus on increased usability and navigation. If you've seen the current website, you know it's a lot to scroll. I'm not gonna demo that part, just trust me, it's a lot of scrolling, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna obviously add more data models but we want to make sure it's not more scrolling. So we're going to add more filters, more capabilities. Like if you've ever seen our Patterns and Anti-Patterns Explorer and our other uh, tools, there's amazing filtering that we're going to add to that capability as well. So this is what a lot is used right now, right? Now, this is a little bit of the Salesforce Diagrams Roadmap. Now, remember, Justin earlier utilized, you know, Safe Harbor. Please, you know, make your buying decisions based on what's built today. This is a Safe Harbor Roadmap. You know, feel free to take a photo, but I'll be honest, you're not, you know, things change. But where we're really gonna start is uplifting the existing diagram content. So that goal is, in the, in, since the inception of diagrams, we've come out with the well-architected framework, patterns and anti-patterns explorer. We're doing more robust uh, uh, decision guides. There's so much more content coming in that now we know there's a lot more in the need of just, like AI and data is bringing more risk and more complexity, and we know everyone needs to be able to convey what that risk and complexity looks like in a very simple way without just giving them the riot act. For those of you not from the US, riot acts are just a lot of lists, just a lot of text. 
you know, of how AI and data work, right? And then at some point this summer, we'll get a nice release, right? And that's where Ruth is celebrating and I'll be happy, everybody will be happy, oh, my team will be happy. I'll be, we'll happy. be happy. Yes, happy. I'll be happy, yes, right? And then we're gonna get to customer listening, right? So who, who here thinks they're a customer for this diagramming tool? Come on, more hands. If you're sitting here, you're a customer <laughs> for this. My God, you know, that's just how it works. So, and then what we're gonna do is Torlight is gonna expand and more products, templates or tools, right? We've got this robust set of tools across a well-architected framework and there's just a lot for us to work with. And then finally, you know, we're gonna build the diagram integrations across the well-architected product suite. Justin showed it, right? We had that messaging in event bus, I didn't write it, it's a part of our well-architected framework. And that diagram essentially elocutes the same exact concept. Right? So how do we embed more of that kind of content inside of the framework itself? How do we also make it the other way, where great content becomes great diagrams? So you may be wondering, all right, how do we actually get, get in on some of this fancy customer listening? Now, I want to introduce this person. Now, Kelly could not make it for TDX, unfortunately, but Kelly Henry is the lead of our new diagrams product team. And as it says, we need your help. Or, I was gonna write she needs your help, but it's, it's more the royal we, right? But we need your help. So if you're really interested in, you know, in that customer listening, if you're interested in being that customer when it comes to diagrams, the future of diagramming, which I'm guessing if you're sitting here, you're interested, then really reach out to Kelly. And yes, she does have Kelly at salesforce.com. So Kelly's looking for feedback. Kelly's looking to do that listening so that she can provide a robust roadmap beyond just that really, that really quick slide that I showed. So, given all that, I want to thank everybody for joining us. How we get it? And also, just FYI, we still got workshops going right across the way. Actually, the one, I think it's halfway in. It's about diagram, but we've got two more. So, feel free to engage there. And thank you very much. Have a good rest of your TDX, rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.